Oh, I, I got a little message on my screen. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for the Village of Woodbury. Um, I do not have a flag, but I would like to stand and pledge, do the pledge to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, Republic. one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. And a special thank you to all our veterans. Tomorrow's Veterans Day. And the village uh, has a ceremony at the Highlands uh, Cemetery for those who wish to attend. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to introduce our board members this evening. We have uh, Mr. Kevin Abrams, Mr. Andrew Zumas, uh, Mr. Craig Brady, myself, uh, Karen Ungerer. We do not have a full board. Uh, we lost one member to the planning board. Um, hopefully next month we'll have the five member board. Uh, we meet the second Wednesday of each month. Our next meeting will be in December, on December 8th probably virtually, I, I assume that, would that be right, Kelly? Probably, yeah, okay. All right, let's look at the agenda. Um, first on the agenda is the executive session. We do not have one this evening. Um, approval and sec acceptance of previous minutes. Has everyone looked at the minutes of October 13th? Yeah. Do I have a I motion? I make a motion, we accept them. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, um, new business. We do not have any of that either. So we have action on decisions. Um, like I said, we do not have a full board. Um, it is up to the applicants if they wish us to delay the vote for till we have a full board. <clears throat> Kelly, it's um, on the uh, Fisher application. The 60 days isn't up till December 12th. Technically we could wait. You you can wait, um, and the applicant requested you to last time. He was just on. I don't know if he got kicked off. Um, so you might want to move to the next one and see if he jumps back on in a minute to see okay. which one. Okay. All right. So we'll do the Ferrara um, application first. Um, is Mr. Ferrara or Mrs. Ferrara here? They are. Oh, there you are. Yeah, you have to wave because there's so many people on my screen. Um, we don't have a full board. Um, you can delay the vote till next month or we can vote this evening. We need to vote this evening because if we wait any longer, the fence cannot be put up because right. of cold temperatures. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me read the, uh, the public, the, the decision here. Um, we're gonna review the decision for a variance for the construction of a six foot fence in the side yard, whereas pursuant to section 145, 146, I'm sorry, dash five, letter B, no fence shall be more than four feet in height in any side yard. Said property is located in the R 0.25 quarter acre zoning district at two schoolhouse road in Central Valley and is known on the village of Woodbury tax maps as section 230 block seven, lot 2811. Um, we were waiting last month for the 239 from the county. It came in the day after the meeting. So we are able, we, and it was a local determination. So we are able to vote on the decision this evening. So we do have a draft decision here, all right? Um, as a consequence of, and this is the decision that I'm reading now. As a consequence of the board's discussion, the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants the requested area variance described and discussed above to the extent noted above, and hereby finds that the variance as granted is the min minimum variance necessary to preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood. Per section A316-9 of the village code, this decision shall expire if a building permit is not obtained by the applicant within 180 days from the date of this decision. The board may extend this time for one additional period of 90 days if such extension is warranted by the particular circumstances. Do I have a motion to vote on this? I'll make a motion. Second. And do I, who second that? I'm sorry. Andrew. Oh, Andrew, thank you. Okay, um, Andrew, how do you vote? Yes. And Craig? Yes. And Kevin? 
Yes. And I vote yes. So congratulations, you can put your fence up. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. We, again, like we said last month, we, we appreciate you guys, everything you did last month and, you know, pushing everything through with the, the four. So thank you very much. We do appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. And good luck. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a All great right. holiday. Yes. You as well. Thank you. Um, Kelly, do we have the applicant for Fisher? We could do it later. If Mr. We can do it later, but Mr. Fisher is joining right now. Oh, he is. Okay. And I sent uh, David Namatko a quick email, but I haven't heard back yet. <coughs> I, I, I don't see Hi. him anymore. Hi. Oh, there's Mr. Fisher. Okay, <laughs> now I see him. Uh, Mr. Fisher, we do not have a full board. Once again, we lost one member of our board to the planning board. Um, we can vote this evening this? or Who we can there? delay it till December. It's Tonight you have, you have Karen Ungerer, the chairwoman. You have Kevin Abrams, Craig Brady, and Andrew Zumas. Evan Yan Greg. was moved to the planning board. Mm -hmm. So Kevin, Greg, and, I'm, I'm sorry, Karen, Greg, and Kevin are there? Karen, are Greg, Karen. Yes. yes. Um, so I have to decide if I wanna, if I wanna proceed or, or postpone it until December, right? Correct. Now, is the, uh, my application, this application, the first one on the agenda, or? Um, it's it's or the first, it, it's one of the action on the decisions. We, it's one of the two decisions that we vote on. We just voted on one and you're the second one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let me check if I want to proceed. Okay. Um, so Andrew is the one that is, uh, Andrew Yang is the one that is that is off. Evan, Evan, Evan. Yang. Evan Yang. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kevin Yang is off. No. So who's here? Let, let's do. I'll do it slowly. It's Karen Unger, the chair pointed person, is here. Andrew Zumas is here. Kevin Abrams is here, and I, Craig Brady, am here. So the person who is no longer on the board is missing is Evan Yan. Evan what? Yes, you said? Yan, Y-A-N. Y -A -N. N. Let me check if I want to proceed. I mean, I... One second. So is, is is this board member not gonna is gonna be replaced with somebody else? Yes. Left permanently? We're hoping by next month we'll have a fifth member. Mm -hmm. I see. If you need some time to think about it, the board can do the next application and come back to you if that's better for yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. I think I think that you know that would help if I can wait like maybe 15 20 minutes or whatever and then if the board you can do another application and come back to the question with me I'd appreciate it is that something you can do yes absolutely okay all right Alrighty. so then um, we'll talk to, I will we'll talk with you later all right thank okay. you okay okay so we will come back to the Fisher application um, later um, we're going to go to our public hearings. First public hearing is for Beer World. It's a continuation of a public hearing requesting variances from um, section 310-32B to exceed the square footage for a retail establishment. Um, relief from section 310-30D, number two, letter D, to allow an additional wall sign in excess of what is permitted. And lastly, um, Attachment 11 of chapter 310 to allow additional wall sign area in excess of what is permitted. Said property is located in the LC zoning, LC zoning district at 159 State Route 32 in Central Valley is known on the village of Woodbury tax maps as section 226, block one, lot 9.2. Um, actually, that 
public hearing notice is not really correct because Beer World has submitted an amended application. Um, is the applicant present? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Dominic Cridisco, uh, attorney uh, for Beer World, and we're here with our team tonight, uh, including John Safe, our engineer, Larry Marshall, and Lou de Costanzo uh, from Beer World directly. So it's uh, nice to see you all again. Uh, I just want to make uh, one clarification at the outset is, is that we did supply uh, a, a comprehensive response to uh, the questions and comments that we've received to date. That was part of Mr. Marshall's uh, uh, submission. And we do have a alternative plan that has a, um, a reduced uh, footprint overall to address what we believe are some of the concerns that have been uh, pointed out by the board uh, or, or individual board members. And uh, you know, we, we are proposing that as an alternative uh, for the board to consider. But I think before we get into all of that, I'd like to turn it over to Larry Marshall. And if he could share his screen, perhaps he could uh, provide uh, a walkthrough of what, uh, what we provided. Okay, Mr. Marshall. Uh, yes, okay. good evening. Um, so I cannot share my screen at the moment. Um, okay. Give me one sure minute. Kelly will, will fix that real quick. Um, but basically, what we provided to the board um, was, as as uh, <clears throat> as Dominic had mentioned, a, an alternate site plan. Uh, you know, we would still request uh, that we would still ask that the board consider the original footprint, as that is ideal uh, for the applicant of the fifteen thousand one hundred ten square foot building. Um, but we have provided an alternate uh, that reduces that overall uh, building footprint by 2,000 square feet down to 13,105. Um, and in our transmittal, we, we go through the analysis of, of what changes we've made to the building um, and provided a, a, a site plan demonstrating that. I can share that, I think, hopefully I can share that. Yep, thank you. Go here. Thank you, Kelly. Um, no so as I said, we did we did provide a, a, a breakdown of, of um, what we changed and and really this is the what I'm showing here is the site plan that demonstrates the, the revisions to that. Um, we really haven't modified anything in the front of the site um, along the easterly side along Route uh, 32 as that's the um, commercial corridor and, and and we really what we were um, by reducing the overall site footprint of the building, um, we were simply looking to provide a buffer to the residential uh, house to the to the west of this site. Um, and if you look along the westerly side of the property, what we've shown is is really where uh, the limits of disturbance has been has been pulled in away from that westerly property line, um, approximately twenty feet. Uh, we label it at this point here at 21.2. It's fairly consistent across the entire rear of the property, um, but that's really where the disturbance has been modified. Uh, and what we've done is just basically shorten the building up. Uh, we've taken the back portion, we've been taking 2,000 square feet off the building, um, off the rear of it, off the westerly side, um, and then pulled all the parking and loading spaces in. Um, to uh, to make those adjustments uh, as part of that, because we are showing a reduction in building footprint, we've also reduced the number of parking spaces on the site. Uh, right now, we had we previously we had fifty. Um, we reduced that down by seven, down to forty three. Uh, this does meet the criteria of. Um, the planning with it, it's within the criteria of the planning board of reduction of overall um, parking spaces required um, it, by code with a 25% reduction to get down to that 20 to get down to the 43 that we show. Um, so that's that's really the site plan um, a, a summary. Not much has changed um, in terms of the drainage on the site. Um, you know, we do still drain to the low points on the property, uh, which basically in the nor northwesterly corner and then along the northeasterly 
side of the building. Um, stormwater basins are, are primarily unchanged. We will obviously update the, the stormwater pollution prevention plan um, if this building is the one that is chosen uh, and, 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 the, and a variance is granted. Um, but basically what we're showing here is a conservative layout of the, of the drainage that would be on the site. Um, the, uh, in addition, we've provided um, a layout of the signs that are being proposed on the building. We have, um, we have removed one of the, one of the proposed signs. Um, so we are no longer seeking a variance for uh, the sign area or the number of signs on the building. Uh, the main sign will be located on the front, on the, on the Route 32 side of the building. Uh, it would, um, and it, it is shown here. It's basically just channel letters with uh, saying the, you know, the standard beer world with the globe um, that's become synonymous with beer world stores. Uh, overall, if you draw a rectangle around this, um, sign area, it would be 15 square feet. Um, and then on the north side of the building, the northeasterly corner of the building, um, Beer World is proposing uh, their integrated Beer World and Globe sign, um, which again, uh, uh, it is, it would be 15 square feet in size. Uh, two signs proposed on the building, uh, totaling 30 square feet, which is, I believe is within your code requirements. Um, and then there is a third sign, which is just a freestanding sign, um, which again is, is mimics the, the beer world sign integrated globe, uh, with the beer world lettering, um, pylon sign located that would be located, uh, near the entrance to the proposed, uh, uh, facility, uh, maximum overall height consistent with the zoning code of 12 feet. Uh, we also meet the minimum mi minimum uh, height requirement down to the bottom of the sign, uh, which would be seven feet, uh, and it's eight foot ten to the to the bottom of the world lettering. This uh, this sign has a total square footage of uh, twenty square feet, um, and that's what's being. Uh, it, this would be a double uh, double sided internally lit sign. Um, located on the southerly side of the proposed entrance, um, outside of the right of way, but um, but near it. Uh, so that's the signage that's being proposed. In addition to those, uh, the, the revised site plan um, and the sign uh, renderings, we did provide the uh, archaeology report uh, that was prepared prepared by Tracker Archaeology and submitted to Shippo as well as the sign-off letter from SHPO indicating that no further action was required for this site. Um, and then in the transmittal, we provided a, uh, a, a response to each of the questions that, was being, that were being asked um, for, the, for this site. Um, you know, kind of clarification of, of what we had previously discussed at the last planning or at the last zoning board of appeals meeting. If you'd like me to go through those comments, I'll be happy to. Um, but uh, they are all all listed in that letter. Did everybody get a chance to read those? Yeah, I, I read them. If I may uh, put this in context. I just want to reiterate something that I mentioned actually at our first appearance several months ago is, is that the, the original plan, you know, of 15,000 square feet, it wasn't the necessarily the size of the building that was triggering the need for the variances. The, the building met all the setbacks and all the bulk area requirements with the exception of one, and that was the restriction on the store size. Uh, in fact, the building itself could have uh, hosted more than one store. Uh, a 15,000 square foot building could have had one store that was 8,000 square feet and another store that was 7,000 square feet, and it wouldn't trigger the need for any variances. We've now reduced the size of the building by an additional 2,000 square feet down to 13,000. And we've also uh, made the signage uh, compliant with the code. 
uh, to eliminate the need for any variances in connection with the signage. Okay, does anyone have from the board have anything they'd like to ask? <laughs> Well, I, I, my God, you, I, it seems like you're asking for a 63%. Did I get that right, Craig? 63% variance? Six, with the new plans, Kevin, or with the old Yeah, plan? the new plan. The new plan is a reduction. Correct. They use the, the square footage that they provided. Right. They, they're reducing both the retail and the redemption area, reducing the parking. The lot coverage and no net no variances for the signs. But they 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 want to make it five thousand one hundred five feet bigger than and the last. Yeah, that that is I, correct. That yes. is correct. So then I would I estimate that to be around sixty three percent. I didn't do the math on that. You know, I don't tell anybody, but I I failed high school math. So <laughs> that's why I went to law school. <laughs> Kevin, I, I could get you the percentage, but like Dominic said, I, you know, I went to law school too, and I just can't, I just can't do the percentages on the fly. Well, Craig's, Craig's the brain with that stuff. Oh, then come on, Craig. Now you're just making Where me I'm... embarrass myself. <laughs> Where is he? I don't even, I only see three people here. I muted and I just happen to have a really handy calculator. That's all. Okay. Um, while you're doing that, I have a question um, either for Mr. Cordisco or Mr. Marshall. Um, the westerly portion where you move the uh, disturbance area to approximately 21 feet, um, does that mean now that there is approximately 40 something odd feet of non-disturbed area? Uh, approximately. Um, okay. It obviously varies uh, from uh, south to north. Uh, right, right. So, with, with right. so you're not going to be cutting any of the trees or whatever's in there? No. That, that's going to be totally undisturbed at this point? That's correct. Um, okay. The limit what we gave to was not the edge of the parking area. Um, we gave distances to the limits of disturbance would be the Right. So the extreme edge of where land would be cleared and graded. Uh, there is no intention of clearing that additional land between the limits of disturbance and the property line uh, that is intended to provide a, a, a vegetative buffer between this property, the commercial property, and the neighboring residential property. Gotcha. Now, the, the northwest corner of the um, property line, you yes. have a note that the vinyl fence that the neighbor put up is approximately seven feet over the um, boundary line. That is correct. So that pretty much will be cleared to that corner. Yes, um, to, to, to the, yeah, on the northwesterly corner, um, that is where the stormwater basin is. Uh, so there is a substantial buffer between that uh, area of the site and where the parking or building would be. But we do need to install um, the stormwater basin, uh, the stormwater infiltration basin to treat and, and detain and infiltrate um, the, the stormwater runoff from the site. Uh, but yes, the, there is that, that corner that comes into the, the vinyl fence that does encroach onto this property. Um, but we would be basically clearing right up to the, the corner of that. Uh, okay. But quickly, you know, if you move away on the along the southerly, if you move from that corner in the southerly direction, um, the clearing does increase fairly fairly quickly. Right. Yeah. No. I no. I was just curious. I just wanted to make sure that I was interpreting properly. Um, yeah. Can you discuss that bioretention basin that's in the front there between the store and Route Thirty Two? Um, I read in your notes that. It will only hold water for 24 hours That's and correct. basically it will appear to the public as a landscaped area. Yes. Um, so the, how, the, how does that work? The so stormwater run stormwater from the uh, from the parking area and the and the proposed building would be conveyed down anything that isn't able to be conveyed to the back uh, basin. Would be conveyed to the front bioretention basin. So 
during times of wet weather, whether it be um, snow melt or rainfall, um, water would can be conveyed into that basin. Um, and that basin is designed to be a filter. Uh, so it is a, it is a slow moving filter. It is not a rapid filter. Um, so you're, 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 uh, you get a small amount of water in the basin and then it infiltrates down through the, um, through the planting soil, um, and then down into the under drains and then ultimately filters out. Uh, if the basin has water in it for an extended period of time, um, anything more than 24 hours, the, the, the basin has gone uh, into failure or in just beginning stages of fail failure and must be maintained. So typically what happens when you see water in there for anything more than 24 hours, um, somebody, the, the, the site owner would hire a contractor to come in and remedy that. And that's typically completed utilizing by taking off the, um, the top layer of, uh, of soil um, and then replacing it with good fil uh, filter soil to allow that to continue to filter. But in terms of the, the appearance, this is a, a relatively shallow basin. This is not a, a deep basin by any means. These are not meant to be, you know, large holes in the ground. Um, you know, it's a, it, in this case, I'll zoom in. Um, but in this case, you have a basin that's roughly about two feet deep, um, uh, which is not a lot uh, by any means. Um, and it has a mobile edges. It has mobile edges. So you, you can go in, um, mow the whole thing um, and maintain it very, very easily. Um, and it would basically just look like a lawn area or a landscaped area in front of the building. Um, you know, somebody with a, with, a, with a good eye for grading will obviously notice that it's a depression and it's a stormwater basin, uh, but for a majority of the time, it will look nothing more than, than a landscaped area in the front of the, front of the building. Okay. How many gallons will that hold? How many gallons? I'd have to get yeah. back to you on that. The, 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 the base area is about 2,000 square feet. Um, it is, uh, you know, side sloped. Um, but if you figure that about a foot and a half of water would be uh, in the basin maximum uh, times 2,000 square feet, I mean, times 7.48. So at handy calculator that Craig has, maybe you can do some calculations. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, uh, what would happen if it, filled up where would it run across the road no 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 no. this this basin is not designed to do that um dot would not allow us to do that um dot would never permit that to occur um that causes all sorts of issues um with obviously with slippery conditions or or not um or icing conditions during winter um but no the what would happen is uh the basin this the catch basin that's actually located on the northeasterly corner of the proposed building um, would ultimately serve as your overflow. So in the event that this goes into failure or we receive a significant amount of rainfall that the basin is not designed to handle, um, then it would, uh, it would flow into this catch basin, similar to any other stormwater basin, and then be conveyed into the stormwater uh, the underground stormwater piping that's located on the north side of the prop, uh, north side of the building, and then ultimately out into the infiltration that's located in the northwesterly portion of the property. So, no, you wouldn't see water flowing out of this basin into the roadway or out into the um, into the parking area. Now, I noticed you had um, silt fences around different areas, that's just a, during construction, correct? Only during construction. Okay. Um, uh, the DEC does not actually mandates that those be removed as part of, um, as part of the, the, the requirements for submitting the notice of termination. Uh, when, we, when we, prior to going under construction, this will require, this will need coverage under the stormwater pollution prevention plan general permit, um, which will we, we would uh, apply for and obtain. Well, you don't, yeah, you just obtain the coverage. It's not a permit. Um, 
And then when we go to file the notice of termination, um, it's it's the removal of those stormwater storm the stormwater measure temporary stormwater measures, including the silt fence, are all required um, prior to submitting that notice of termination. So basically, that silt fence would would be gone when the store is open, you know, when 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 everything's done. Absolutely. Okay. No question. Is there any kind of um, fencing or anything around this area that fills with water? There's nothing proposed because it's shallow. Okay. If it's if that's something that the board wishes to have, um, we could discuss it. But typically, um, with the, the fact that this is a a very shallow uh, a, a shallow basin that will hold uh, water uh, for a very short period of time. We don't typically uh, fence them. Um, not only is the fence an added cost to the applicant, but it tends to be an eyesore. Um, we like to see these as um, as unintrusive as as possible, uh, you know, from a visual standpoint, and fencing them tends to bring attention to them. Um, you know, fences have tendencies of collecting things, whether it be leaves or candy wrappers or things like that or, that are blown against them. It, you know, they just don't look great. So, um, you know, like I said, if we, if that's something the board wishes to have, um, we can discuss that, but generally- No, no, I was, I was, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, I guess, in terms of safety, but you said it's, it's a very shallow, like six inch or yeah, something it, of water that would collect in there. Any, yeah, it's not intended any to hold any significant amount of water. Okay. So, you know, Craig did respond back that it was 63.8 feet. That's, this is what my concern is, is that the size of the variance that they're applying for. Just, well, I think I might have missed something that Larry said. Um, just because I was trying to take notes if you hear typing. You said that you reduced the square footage by 2,000 square feet. And then I thought I heard somebody say that it was for the retail and the, was it the recycling? Oh. The retail, yeah, the retail went down from 11, um, 80, 840 to 10, 860 and a half. And then the redemption went down from 3,000 to 2,000 square feet. Okay. So it's approximately, you know, 1,000 for the redemption, approximately 1,000 for the um, retail. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Kevin. You can keep going. Well, that's okay. I was just, uh, I mean, that's what they're asking us. We have to vote on is the right a 64% variance. I mean, th that is correct as it relates to the size of the store. Um, what, what I was trying to emphasize before was the fact that even at 15,000 square feet, the building meets the code requirements with the exception of the size of the store. And, right. that, and that the LC zone allows multiple stores within the same building. So for instance, like you could have had an 8,000 square foot uh, beer world uh, at this location and a separate entrance to a 7,000 square foot baseball card store and you would have a 15,000 square foot building and it wouldn't require any variances at all. The reason that we're before you is because the, the physical size of the beer world is larger than the 8,000 square foot store that's allowed, even though the building could have contained more than one store. Does that make any sense? I, I'm, if I'm not explaining well, well I'm not. You yeah, know. No, it makes it makes sense. What you're saying is, if 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 you broke it in half and put two stores, everything would be compliant, right? Uh, but that's not that's not what's before this board, right? What's before this board is uh, a variance that's requesting uh, maximum retail building, which is eight thousand square feet. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we're not proposing to have an 8,000 square foot building. It's gonna be an 8,000 square foot store. Oh, I'm sorry, you're you're breaking up. So I to what was before, it's my internet, I apologize. 
No, it's okay. I I didn't mean to speak over uh, over you. I didn't hear you continue on. So if I missed something there, please uh, let me know. No, no. I, I just I think that it's important that while we understand uh, that the building, you know, if it followed uh, all of the code that's in place, it would be able to go up. It's still a significant ask uh, to put up a store. Uh, a single individual store that almost doubles the maximum allowable square footage uh, currently in place. Well, that was with the original proposal. I mean, we, if, if it was uh, 16,000. It's probably almost you know, two thirds. You know, so what we've gone down to is, is 8,000 square feet plus an additional 5,000 square feet. Um, and so, uh, so we have reduced uh, that as an alternative um, you know, and you're absolutely correct. Like we're not applying to put in an 8,000 square foot store uh, for Beer World and then some, like, like I said, like a baseball card store of 7,000 square feet. But, you know, if this project doesn't move forward, somebody else could easily do that at this location. And it could be a 15,000 square foot building and it wouldn't require any variances at all. You know, um, I don't know, you know, if you're aware, but, you know, the the dugout has made it very clear that they're retired and that uh, and that they're not reopening. Um, and, you know, they, they had the parade for them and they put it in writing that uh, that they're not going to continue at this location. So, um, you know, we're under contract to purchase this site. And if and if uh, for whatever reason, if we can't uh, move forward, then I'm sure it's going to remain for sale and someone else will have a different proposal uh, that will move forward at that time. One aspect that I would like to add in, in addition to what Dominic just said is that, um, you know, the nature of the beer world business is, is a relatively quiet um, retail establishment. And, and I do understand that, uh, you know, the, the, the overall building size or the overall store size, um, you know, exceeds the maximum requirement by that 63.8%. Uh, but beer world is a, a we, we, we don't require a great deal of parking. Um, the store does not receive a, a, a great deal of um, deliveries uh, to and from the site. All those deliveries are made during normal business hours. Uh, there's no overnight stocking. There's no early morning deliveries. Um, there's, not, uh, there's not late hours uh, of operation. Um, this is in terms of a retail establishment in this area, uh, as it buff, as it uh, directly adjoins residential areas, um, the retail <coughs> store is a, is, a, is a is a low you know is a low uh, is not very intrusive to this neighborhood. Um, you know, and, and Lewis and and Sonny and and then the rest of the beer world staff have encouraged you all to, to visit the other Beer World stores to see how they operate. And they really are kind of a quiet, um, a, a quiet neighborhood store. Um, they are, they do require a large square footage um, because they carry so much, so many different uh, items within their store. You know, you, you're carrying 4,000 different beers um, and different beverages in your in your establishment, you just need the footprint to get to to, to be able to display that. Um, and and you know I've I've been to many beer world stores that they have. I've been to uh, you know the, some of the busiest ones and some of the quietest ones. And at no point in time have I ever been to a facility other than at a grand opening where they have more than ten or fifteen cars in the parking lot. Um, though that's on the busiest days, that's on the quietest days. Um, you know, in terms of having a retail establishment that replaces the dugout and, and doesn't, isn't an intrusive, doesn't severely affect neighbor existing, the existing environment, this is a great store to have. And it, it's not that that statement is not because they are my clients, because I've been able to see what other businesses. I've done a lot of retail work, a lot of commercial work, and Beer World is a is is kind of a quiet user in in communities. But you could have acquired a piece of property that would allow you to do what you want to do. 
outside the LC zone, perhaps. So, you know, it's not like, you know, I don't, you chose this property and then you want a 64% a variance to, to put up what you want. Yeah, and, and this is probably property somewhere around Woodbury that you could put anything you wanted on it. I just, I, you know. I want, I want to be sure that I'm understanding your concern. Uh, Mr. Abrams, is, is it over the size of the building or is it over the size of the store? You're allowed 8,000 square feet. You're looking um, for a 64% variance. Yeah, well, that, that doesn't factor in the fact that, uh, that we also have the redemption center, which is required by law for us to do. Well, um, but, but nonetheless, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think, uh, you know, I mean, this, this could be somebody else's strip mall with multiple stores that are there that could have been 15,000 square feet. This can also be a, this, uh, within the LC zoning district, there's restaurants and drinking establishments that are permitted. This could be a, this could be a bar uh, that's open late into the evening um, where you have much higher traffic into and out of the facility. Um, these, this is in terms of the use of the property. Uh, yes, it's a significant variance that we're requesting, but in terms of the user, uh, the, the impact um, on the surrounding uses is minimal to none. Um, and you have uses that are permitted in your zoning district that would be far more impactful than the one proposed. Uh, I'm going to follow up with what Kevin said, and, and while I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, Mr. Marshall and Mr. Cordisco, the I think Kevin's specific, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but the specific language that's in the village code, which was added specifically under 31032B2, no single retail establishment shall exceed 8,000 square feet. You know, there's a lot of leeway that we as a zoning board are, are allowed to, um, by virtue of the nature of that board and, and state law as such, um, to grant variances. Um, and, and certainly it's within our purview to grant this one as well. I'm not saying it's not. I think the concern that we all have is um, that is specific language in the village code, right? And, and a 60 plus percent variance or a 70% or even if it was 50, it wouldn't matter really is larger than people tend to be comfortable with. How's that for, for putting it delicately? It, it's significant. And that's because it's specific language in the village code. Um, I think that's where our concern lies. I, I don't know. I'm struggling with this and I'm not saying yay or nay one way or the other, but um, that's my concern. Craig, if I could just piggyback off something that you just said and also address something that Larry said, you noted that this is specific language in the code. Now the language is for retail establishments and Larry, your focus was that this was a beer world. As you all know that the variance will run with the land and the variance is for a retail establishment. The variance is not gonna be tied to beer world. So it could be transferred to another retail establishment. So I just wanna bring that up um, just so that that is clear for the record as to the specific language of the code that you are requesting being varied. Um, that being said, I turn it back over to Karen Craig. Uh Kelly, the Redemption Center, that's not considered retail, is it? Um, no, I don't know. I have to look at how we had classified that. I think that it was being treated by the building department or considered by the building department as an accessory, accessory to retail. Correct, that's correct. And how, how do you come up with the size of the redemption area? Is it tied to the size of the retail area? It's it's based on what would be functional, and so so as, uh, as far as the layout of the interior space. 
how um how often do do are the um recycled or rede redeemed uh, cans and bottles or whatever how how often are they picked up yeah Lew lewis covered this last meeting which which you weren't able to be at and but he, it's a good thing he's here this time as well so maybe lewis if you could speak to how the redemption center functions hello everybody i'm lewis de costanzo the ceo of uh beer world um it, it depends on how much redemption comes back in you know like they said by law we have to uh take back items that we also give out so um it's every time a delivery comes in the same distributor takes back their own items so uh as like uh a few pallets come off the truck, a few bags go back on the truck. So um, it's kind of just a regular delivery, you know, system. So these are stored according to manufacturer or whatever brand. Yeah. Okay. That's just like that. Are they crushed or anything, the cans, while you store them? And somebody asked us last meeting about if if it was like a, something that had sound or loud, uh, you know, if it was loud, there's zero noise. It's no, just no, I, a, I was more concerned with space. <laughs> no, but we try to get them right out because uh, some customers bring them back. They're filthy. So we just uh, tie them in the bag, get them in there and get them out to the store as soon as possible. If you've seen some of our establishments, we're very clean. We're very, uh, our properties are immaculate. Um, our stores are well kept. You know, we don't uh, try to be like that old beverage center that everybody's thinking about, but uh, we're, you know, Beer World is a different type of uh, establishment. Okay. I saw you also submitted um, an archaeological survey because um, I guess because there was a potential for the recovery of either prehistoric or historic artifacts or sites, but you didn't find anything, correct? There were 30 shovel tests, nothing was found except for those foundations, but they're 20th century, so they're not really prehistoric <laughs> or, or historic. Um, did, did we receive a part three EAF, Kelly? I don't think we did. So what they've provided is they've provided it in um, increments uh, and submissions that way for you to consider. Um, that's pretty much what they've provided. I don't know if you want something that specifically addresses the items that are in the part two. I leave that to you, but I know that they were trying to do so by making their submissions and their responses to your questions. Dominic, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that part. Yeah, no, that's correct. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the facade of the building, are, are you intending to shrink the facade and essentially maintain the look that was provided in those um, renderings earlier? Two entrances, et cetera? Yes. Okay, thank you. So really we're taking um, off the middle basically keeping the edges and bringing in the middle. Um, because of, as Lewis described, the redemption center, the, the redemption area, um, they really want separate entrances for that because they don't want people bringing the returns through the store. Um, you have leaking bags, you have people that don't rinse or wash or, um, and as Lewis said, they, they run a very clean store. Um, it isn't the old fashioned beverage center. It's not sticky floors and stale beer. It's, it's um, you know, a clean establishment and they wanna keep that all in the redemption area. Um, so that's why we have the separate entrance for them. Makes sense, thank you. Does anybody have any other questions? a pleasure to do you, uh, I need to open this up to the public if there's no questions from the board hey yeah. okay um is there anyone I I still see the rent the uh plans on the on the screen here is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak to this application
Do you have access to that, Kelly? I don't see anybody. Yeah, nobody has unmuted themselves. Um, okay. I don't know. It was a lot of information. Maybe they're, they're processing. <laughs> Okay, so what, what do we want to do here? Do we want to carry this over or do we want to close public hearing or what are your thoughts on this? What do you think, Craig? I'm not sure. Well, they provided all the information. We don't have anything else to ask of them, right? Um, I, yeah, I, I went through the, the uh, amended application and all the charts and with a fine tooth comb, I, I went to the site, I walked to the back there um, both sides, you know, the whole area. Um, I don't think I have any more questions. Do we have anything that we need from them in terms of the EAF? What? Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I, I inhaled. You, you're catching my signs. Um, <laughs> no, I was just going to say, in, in terms of seeker, um, if you recall, this board is handling it as an uncoordinated review, and that's at the request of the applicant. So at one of your prior meetings, we went through the part two EAF. What they were submitting is supposed to be responsive to all of those items. Um, as I, what I usually do is if I'm drafting a document, then I'll compare and make sure that all of those, those items are completed and have been addressed. I have not done that for tonight's meeting. Um, I can do that for your next meeting if you'd like, but I don't have that prepared for you tonight. So I- We also say, didn't get back the 239, I don't believe. Um, I think you did, but let oh, me just did? check. Uh, I believe it was local determination, as I recall. Yeah, here it is. It uh, was received September 2nd, local determination. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, I, must have, I probably have that in my other packet from last month. <laughs> so if you'd like me to take a look for your next meeting with regards to Seeker, just make sure that everything that was marked off on the part two um, has been addressed in the part three materials that they've uh, provided. I can do that and have um, you know, document prepared for your review for the next meeting. But again, I didn't do that for your meeting tonight. I didn't know really where we were going this evening. So didn't want to jump the gun on anything. Yeah, I, I, I personally would like that just to make sure that we have everything covered. Okay. Everyone agree with that or disagree or? Well, that doesn't necessitate the public hearing being kept open, does it? I don't think so. No, the only thing would be is if they missed something that needed to be provided. Um, it should be available for the public to comment on. But if you don't think they missed anything, then the public hearing doesn't need to stay open. Well, that's a risk we would have to take without your review. So that's probably not a good idea. I let you guys make the decisions. You're no right, so I'll make a motion. That we carry <laughs> the, the uh, I'll make a motion that we carry the public hearing over and request council to provide her analysis of the EAF part two. Okay. I'll second yeah. that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. So, so we will. Sorry. No, that's all right. We'll, we'll carry this over to next month and um, make sure that we have everything we need before we close the public hearing. And so that's December 8th, and it will uh, be Zoom again. So I will send out the invite. Dominic, I'll send it to you if you could distribute it amongst your team because I only have your and Larry's email addresses. That would yep. be great. That's certainly not a problem. And uh, once again, thank you all for, for your consideration and, and we appreciate your comments. So we'll see you at the, the December meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank your you. responses to our comments. Not a problem. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank That's you all. very much and have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Take care. All right. Um, I think we'll go to Mr. Fisher. Um, to see if he wishes to have us vote on the decision this evening or to carry it over to December. And I'll yes. see you there, so, Mr. Uh, so Mr. Niamatko uh, is here and I'll yeah. let him take over. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Hi David. <laughs> Hi, board members. Uh, thank you for your consideration. I was in another sleeping? presentation. So, yes, I'm here. I thought you were sleeping or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the car in a parking lot outside another municipality. So, okay. um, so 
board members, thank you for your consideration. Do we have a full board this evening? No, we do not. We, um, we are one of our members would just transfer to the planning board. So we only have four members this evening. Oh, okay. Um, uh, can I get it a It was Evan call? Yan, David. Evan oh, Yan was moved to the planning okay. board. Okay, yeah, so we would like to go ahead with the um, reading of the resolution and the vote. Okay. Good. Okay, then that's what we will do. All right. Um, so let me read the uh, public hearing notice, the action on decision notice here. This is to review a decision for area variances to permit the subdivision of 2.07 acres into two lots for the construction of a new single family residence. Whereas pursuant to section 310-7, properties in the R1A district are required to have a minimum lot area of one acre and a minimum side yard setback of 30 feet. The application proposes a minimum lot area of 0.91 acres and a side yard setback of 12.2 feet. Said property is at 7 Scunamunk Road, Highland Mills, section 204, block one, lot, 36.2. And this is the, uh, the decision after several pages, a couple of pages of facts and findings. As a consequence of the board's discussion, the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants the requested area variances described and discussed above to the extent noted above, conditioned on the applicant obtaining subdivision approval from the planning board and hereby finds that the variances as granted are the minimum variances necessary to preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood. For section A316-9 letter E of the village code, this decision shall expire if a building permit is not obtained by the applicant within 180 days from the date of final subdivision approval by the planning board. The board may extend this time for one additional period of 90 days if such extension is warranted by the particular circumstances. Do I have a motion to take a vote on this? I'll make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? Craig, thank you. All right. Um, Andrew, how do you vote? I vote no, Karen. Okay. Craig? You're muted. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to unmute and it didn't okay. want to cooperate. I vote yes. Okay, thank you. Kevin? Yes. And I vote yes. So the applicant, the variances are granted and we wish you luck with that. Thank you again, board members. We really appreciate it. And again, thank you for your consideration. Have a great evening. Thank you. And thank you very much, board members. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you. All right. All righty. Okay. We have our second public hearing of the evening. This is the levy or levy. I'm not sure. Public hearing requesting variances for the reconstruction of a single family dwelling that was destroyed by fire from village code sections 310-7, 310-43 and 310-43.1. Said property is located in the R3A zoning district at 999 Route 32 in Highland Mills and is known on the village of Woodbury tax maps as section 201, block one, lot 20. Um, okay, so is Mr. Levy here? Yes. Yep, I see you now. Am I saying, is it Levy or Levy? Um, it's originally it's pronounced Levy, but you know, people use different, uh, so I'm, I'm comfortable okay. either way. Okay, I'll say Levy then, that's fine. Um, so originally you applied for a roof to be installed on the um, remaining portion of the building, um, which was denied. And then you applied for variances to reconstruct the building, correct? Yes, madam. And this house was destroyed by fire. And I understand there was a fatality at that during that fire. Yes. Um, yes. So what you wish to do is you wish to rebuild the house because the masonry structure, the um, the walls, the outside, the inside, the masonry portion has not been damaged. Um, I don't know if anybody else went there 
but uh, it's, it's a beautiful 1870 home. The outside, if you didn't look at the roof, <laughs> which is all burned and the inside, which is a lot of smoke damage and, and burned portions. Um, the masonry part, the stone part is, is intact. So I, I think it would be very difficult to, to tear that down and move it, you know. Um, and what I found interesting was that with all the burning, there were still books on the shelves in the library, which was uh, yeah. a lot of smoke damage, but no, no burning there. Okay, so we have the house dates to 1870, and they were made non-conforming basically by subsequent zoning changes. Is that correct, Kelly? Okay, so that being said, you know, you have a lot and you have a home that are both non-conforming there. So for the lot, you would need 15,000 square feet of lot area, but you have 53,451. So you're, you're fine with that. Um, the code would also want you to have um, municipal water and sewer, or if you have a well and septic, it would have to conform to the standards, you know, from, the, from New York State and Orange County. Um, you need to meet the setback requirements because you're in the R3A zoning district. And you'd have to have a minimum lot width of 100 feet. And you have a triangular lot. But I believe the portion where the house is um, has more than 100 feet. Would that be acceptable, um, Kelly? I would look to, well, I haven't seen a plan. So I couldn't exactly tell you that. But then I would look to the building department to, for their uh, interpretation of that in the first instance. OK. All right. Um, so. The house is, is another issue. Um, basically what the code says is that when you have a non-conforming building, you cannot rebuild it unless you make it conforming. Um, obviously the masonry walls would make that difficult to, to move that building and, and move it where it should be. So I think what we need, we need some detailed plans with measurements. Um, we need to know you know, the area of the lot, we need to know the setbacks, we need to know the square footage, all those things. So we know exactly what variances you need. And Did what you get one of these? For. Yeah, but that, if you look at that, Kevin, it doesn't really have a lot of the measurements on it. I can't even read them because. <laughs> well, so yeah, I, I was looking for this packet online and it's not there, um, unfortunately, because that would allow people of older age group like Kevin and I <laughs> to um, zoom in on the PDF to see the dimensions and what have you. But fundamentally, when you look at, right, uh, and the lighting is not gonna cooperate, but yeah. this is 32, that's 87. And you can sort of see that what looks like the lot line here. Yep. And essentially that's one of the needs for variance because it's literally sitting on top of the, the lot line. Yeah. The side and the rear are probably fine. The front is clearly fine. But to your point, I don't, well, so I'm gonna give you my opinion. Here is, um, you're not gonna move the masonry. You're not gonna move the building. It's either gonna be rebuilt or you're gonna deny the variances. It's gonna be torn down, right? So Basically. I don't know. I don't know that we need specific measurements, right? Because in this instance, um, you, if you wanna allow the rebuilding because of the code saying it's damaged more than 50%, you grant the variances. I sort of agree with that because it's a, it's a, there's a lot of wall there to move. You wouldn't move it. You could not no. possibly yeah. think about moving. So I mean, if it's if it's two feet, feet, six feet, ten feet, it is what it is. But we don't even know what variances we we would be granting. We need, I mean, we need detailed plans to make sure when we have that conversation, we're granting the minimum variances if that's the case, right? Yeah, uh, Andrew, my argument essentially, or my, my proposition is that regardless of the size of the variance, you can't move that building 
you you either rebuild it in place or you deny the variances and the structure would be destroyed. I, I believe, uh, uh, Mr. Levy, I believe um, that it's it's basically the interior that needs to be reconstructed, correct? Well, um, of course, I would first need uh, to- Well, the roof um, also. Fix I mean, the roof, yes. Yeah. After, and then <clears throat> after, yeah, sure. After I fix the roof, then I would uh, definitely, you know, replace um, um, or fix the, uh, the some of the uh, interior walls needs to be replaced and uh, because of some, uh, you know, water damage and, um, um, but I, I would say, I mean, I did invite an, an engineer to um, take a look in, inside the house and he said that the house is, is in good shape and, you know, once we fix the roof, the, the roof, then we can, uh, you know, move forward with just uh, even even the floors, which are uh, hardwood floors, they were ab able to, um, um, I would say, survive the fire and, 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 and even the rain that came afterwards. So um, ba basically, if you, you allow this variance, then uh, I would go ahead and, and fix the roof, and then I think we can restore this house to its uh, you know, original condition. That, that that is what I would like to uh, to do, and I I agree. I I mean, you can't really move the house. <clears throat> I mean, you can, but you would need to destroy it and then build a yeah. new house, which which I'm not sure makes a lot of sense because even if you build a new house. Um, by code, it's still going to be, you know, fairly close to the uh, to eighty seven, and which is, you know, a noisy, obviously a noisy. Uh, um, so I, I don't know about, you know, the, if it makes sense, but I, I agree with that with that point that, uh, that you you made. So, so what, Kelly? What do you think we should do here? Do we need to have those plans if? Well, I think you need some, as, as Andrew was saying, I think you need some of that information before you can make a decision because you need to make sure that you are supported in your decision that you are granting the minimum variance is necessary. I know that the walls can't be moved without being destroyed, um, but looking at the survey, there is some of the information there. If the board would like, I mean, I think that they obviously need to submit ones that, that everybody can read, <laughs> um, but I can reach out to that surveyor for the specific items that he probably already has because he's been out there and he did the survey, but are needed by this board to make a decision. So it's not just like miscommunication and him thinking he needs to go back out there when you may only need a, a few additional measurements that he already has that he probably just didn't put on there. If, if the board wants, I don't, I don't, yeah, and if we could get in a digital copy, Kelly, we, we can see, you know, we, we, we would be able to determine what variances I, we, we would need to grant in order to be, at least begin the process of fixing the roof. Okay. Can, can I suggest maybe to, I, I have a digital copy of the PDF, if, if I could forward that to you, if that would help. That definitely would help. If you could send that to the building department, um, that'll certainly make it much easier for me to figure out what is missing it's, and what needs to be on there. It, actually, I did send it um, to the building department. I can give you the, uh, the date, which I... Okay. Um, it, was, it was sent. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure why it wasn't up on the website because I was looking for it for the whole packet. No worries, largely, Jess is on and she's gonna take care of it. Largely for that reason, because the plans, some of the plans tend to be really tiny and I- I don't it. have it at the moment. So when I get back and the no building department gives it to me, then I will put it up there. You're not gonna to go to town hall right now, village hall right now? I can't oh, get into the building department. I'm kidding, <laughs> obviously. She was like, I would if I could, but- yeah, oh. I, Well, I don't have the key, come on. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Um, um, 
Do you have the date that you sent it to the building department? I'm just looking uh, on on the emails that I. Um, so Kelly, how does that process work? Does does the applicant submit the plans to the building department, who then makes the determination based on? We lost you, Andrew. Yeah, we lost you again, Andrew. This is Let's the crux of the question is coming through. <laughs> <laughs> My internet is terrible. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Um, what, finish up that process for, for the applicant, if you can. Uh, when he submits those uh, plans to the building uh, department, what happens as a result of that? And, and what will then come before this zoning board? Okay, so the applicant submitted plans to the building department. They get distributed to this board. Your chairwoman determines what is on agendas um, and if the application can be on the agenda. And just on that point, um, with the variances that are needed that we reviewed, um, this application does not appear to be, unless something comes up and what's submitted next, does not appear to be subject to the moratorium. That was something that Karen had asked me to address in the memo. So the, this board can proceed. Otherwise, unfortunately, the applicant would have to wait, but he doesn't. So what would happen now is he would submit these plans. I'll reach out to his surveyor and ask for whatever additional information is needed. He will then submit that revised one to this board, and it will be placed up on the website by your clerk. And, and then you then at your turn, next what? And then you, you would advise as to need to up again. Yeah. <laughs> you keep saying internet connection unstable. I apologize. But but my point is once the plans go in, right, and we look at the setbacks and we look. Uh, you'll make a determination based on uh, whatever variances are needed. Will that allow the complete reconstruction? Is that is that what granting those variances is going to allow? What exactly are we going to allow as a result of this greater than 50% fire damage? So what it would allow would be allowing the reconstruction if, if the board is in favor, I'm not saying one way or the other, right. it would allow the reconstruction of the existing uh, dwellings, dwelling with the masonry walls to happen since the building department made the determination that it was greater than 50% damaged by fire. I would have to look to see if they would also require ARB approval after that, but it sounds like the walls are fine. So I'm not sure that it would, but I, I'm not sure if that... Um, at this time, but then they would apply for a building permit and go on their merry way to cover it and fix the roof and whatever they need to do. Um, so there's no additional damage from weather or what up, what have you. So I I found the original mail that that was was sent in uh, in uh, first of October. October. Um, okay. Okay, I'll follow up with Maria, and if she doesn't have that or if there's a problem, if you don't mind, I'll just reach out to Jonathan Millen, who is your surveyor, and just have him send a digital copy. Okay. And, and there is also a report that was made by um, Tal Talcott Engineering, um, who checked the, uh, the structure and, and the house. Um, and he also gave me a, his, his <clears throat> sorry, his written uh, opinion stating that the house is, is in, in good shape and I can um, safely, I, I would say, build, build the roof. Uh, so and, it's, and, and it's that salvageable. Was the, Did you enclose that? Exactly. Have... Yes, no. sir. Yes, sir. I, I sent. It might have been sent to the building department uh, as part of that, seeing that, if that. they could. Um, you know, we did not get that. I didn't get that. Okay. 
I didn't get it either. My guess is that it was sent to the building department when they were considering whether this is just by building permit or if it needed variances. So if you could, um, you know what, I'll follow up with Maria and see if she has that as well. Kelly, I even been checking my website, my email. Oh. I printed all your little notes you sent. Wow, oh. Kevin, you're getting really good. I know, isn't it crazy? <laughs> so tech savvy. But anyhow, the people that used to live there way back when, their last name was Ball, B-A-L-L. -L. I don't know anything else about them than that. In case Mr. Levy's interested in that. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful structure. It, oh, definitely. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. And the outside of the, you know, the, from the from the outside, there's no evidence of any fire. The yeah. inside walls, which the is crazy masonry doesn't have anything. What was that, uh, Andrew? Which is crazy because the night of the fire, I, I would have thought everything would have melted down. I, I just seeing that 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 fire was. Yeah, um, the outside is all stone, you know, and the inside is all cement. Um, when you walk in, the staircase is still it's, there. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, it's the just, fact that it's, it's damaged. There's a lot of damage, you know, um, either vision, you know, aesthetically or or structurally. Well, water but, um, does. Water makes the most damage. Yeah. What What yeah, I just thought was all the books in the library are all on the shelves, like nothing happened. <laughs> But now is there a secret book that you pull and it's actually a doorway? <laughs> there, could, there could be. I didn't because touch that anything, would be awesome. I just looked. <laughs> but if you drive the throughway, you really notice that. I've seen it I, and I've seen pictures of it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be familiar with it when this application came before you. Um, just so that the board knows, you don't have anybody on for the public hearing. Um, so unless you have any further questions for the applicant, you could also adjourn this one to the 8th and I will um, endeavor to get you all of that information prior to your next meeting. And I'll also get it to Jess so that she can make sure she has everything that, that we have. All right. I'll make that motion that we carry it over to December 8th. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so, so Mr. Levy will carry this over to next month. And hopefully by then we'll have the information that we need and you can get started. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you. All righty, um, we have no more public hearings this evening. Um, we have no building inspectors report. Um, we do not have any deliberations on closed public hearings. So I'll make a motion that we adjourn unless somebody has something they wish to add prior. Okay, I'll make that motion. Do I have a I second? I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving.